how do you get the energy and intensity and everything back that you had a few weeks back into this trip right now? What we've talked about this week is gaining that edge. Uh, it's a fine line, uh, but this group, we need that edge that you guys saw a couple weeks ago. Uh, and every, everyone wants to focus on what the opposition has to play for. We have a lot to play for. So I think it's just human nature that we get sucked into believing or seeing what the other teams are doing versus what we're doing. So all this week it's been about us regaining that nice competitive edge that we had there. Yeah. You never have time. Yeah, absolutely, and that like that's that's what allowed us to get out of the pickle we were in in October. Uh, so we need to recapture that because when we do have that mentality, we're a very good team. A couple of weeks ago, you you got the players together in the middle of the court down here and told them. I think at that point you won 12 or 14, and you said we've got to keep improving. And then you've had a little bit of a dip now. What do you put that down to? Is it complacency from the players? You, you, look, you can use whatever word. We just haven't been playing to the level that is necessary to win games. Um, you know, obviously oppositions come in and they're, they're playing for their lives, so they, they come in with a great purpose. Uh, you know, the attention they're giving particular guys on our team has allowed us to work on some things that we'll see moving forward, so we should be far more equipped to combat some of that as well. Look, that's, that's part of the game. Uh, you know, every team, every team, one through nine, he's at the top of their scattering report. They come out publicly and talk about how they need to stop Bryce Cotton. Now, for us to be an effective team and for me to uh, become a better coach, we need to be able to fight fire with fire and combat that and take advantage of what Bryce creates for our other guys on the floor. You would have to ask the NBL that question. My opinion doesn't count for anything in that. Uh, so this week, the Wildcats were handed a suspended fine for the Christian Drew little concussion. What yep. has been the explanation to you about the handling of that, that scenario? Uh, so for me, player welfare is always at the front of my mind, irrespective of what that looks like on the floor. Uh, the club has answered all the necessary questions for the NBL so we can move forward and they set the boundaries in that situation. Have they, have they made it clearer as to what the player welfare guidelines look like for, for the, 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 the clubs in the NBL? Because concussion is a, it's, it's a bit of a new challenge for, for basketball to, to grapple with. Yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm privy to the meetings and the discussions, but like, that's for sure. Uh, for medical people in the NBL to be comfortable with that situation. Do clubs have enough technology available to them on game day to spot incidents and be able to identify them at the time rather than wait them nine minutes before you talk to them and come off and be like, you know, other leagues have more cameras, more, more TVs, more people on the sidelines to be able to see these things and go get him off. Yeah, that's, that's for sure a question for the NBL because, as you just mentioned, different leagues have different policies. So um, those questions, like you would have to ask the NBL how they handle that moment. How's the fitness of the group ahead of tomorrow? Anyone missing? Anyone coming back? Uh, well, we've been full tilt the last couple of games, so no one will be missing, and everyone got through this week's practice, so we're 100%. How do you handle Keanu emotionally? So the way I approach what you're asking is when Keanu first thinks about playing for the Perth Wildcats, I start to build a relationship and rapport with him. So at any time when he needs someone to rely on, he can come and talk to myself or we have many different people throughout a club that can help him through these situations if it is affecting him. Um, you know, I'm sure he handles these differently to when he was a teenager. So 
uh, all I can be is just a great support for him and him understanding that he can come and speak to me if I can give him some good guidance through these times. I check in with all of our players all the time. It's a responsibility for our staff to make sure we understand where our players are because we worry about the result of a game. Athletes, players, they, they have life to deal with as well. So it would not be a good coach if I'm not worried about that part of it because that's a huge part of their day-to-day -day life. So if we're not checking in, we're not doing our job. Yeah, correct. For sure, and he came with a high level of expectation for himself and for what his play would mean to this team. I think he's slowly feeling very comfortable within our group and the impact. But then on the same, on the flip side, his teammates understand him a whole lot better as well. You know, like Ty Webster's a great example. Like he was with us for at the end of last year. You would say he's feeling pretty comfortable with our group now. It takes time. Uh, especially when you're coming in and you're not trying to upset the apple cart, but there's moments that it's okay to upset the apple cart because you have to uh, put your personality on the team. Yeah, so like more, more so Hiram Harris, like, and this is, was my discussion with him this week, is you look at his career, he's just been a fighter just to make a roster or a development player, put his own money into making himself an NBL player. Last week, first time he's dealt with a situation where a team really relies on his responsibility. So for him to get in foul trouble as quick as he did, it allowed him and us to see the influence he has on the game where any of the other previous teams that he's played for, he gets three fouls in that situation. The coach sits, subs him out and goes, great job. You know, so it's a huge learning curve for all of us involved and like a great accomplishment for him to see the value that he is to this team right now. Is there any extra pressure? I know you don't like talking about um, expectation from the crowd, but like the, the, the loss in Damo's uh, retirement jersey game, your last home game, for the regular season and the chance to lock up the second spot. Is there extra pressure on the playing group this weekend? No. There's no extra expectation from within the playing group to, to perform in front of the Red Army for the last time in the regular season and to get a home final? Like our expectation is the same. I come back to we've just lost a little bit of that edge of just finding a way to win a game. Uh, we look back at our breakers game, 240 left in the game. We have a very good look from the three-point line. It goes down, you're probably asking me different questions. So we still had our opportunities. We just need to bring that like competitive edge that we had there that we've just let not, you know, it hasn't shone in the last three games probably. How important is that top to finish the game? Very. So then is this weekend not extra important to secure that top to finish? If I'm taking one game at a time, we'll get the job done and then we move on from there. The beauty of how we've approached this season, if we slip up, we have other opportunities. But my day-to-day -day approach, my game-to-game -game approach, like we, we don't change the mentality in the way we attack a game. Like I got asked yesterday, what are you doing in the FIBA break? I haven't even thought about the FIBA break. Like I, I know you guys think, you can ask any player, we go game-to-game, -game, day day-to-day because consistency wins. So until we get that level of consistency and the edge comes under that, it doesn't matter what's happening next week or a month from now. If we don't have it, we're not going to get to where we want to get to. No worries.